Well, hi. So I'm wondering, are you participating in Dry January? And if you are, how is it going? I know uh, just from my own experiences as a wine store owner, um, Dry January is a lot like the gym. A lot of people are participating those first few days, first week, but as time slowly ticks on through the month, we would see more and more of our customers come back. So in theory, it's, it's sort of a nice idea to abstain a little bit from alcohol. Um, I think it's just really creating a yearly balance instead of focusing on just one month of going dry. Um, but you know what? It's, it's one of those that I feel like a lot of the stress we've been under has really increased a lot of our wine consumption lately. Hi, I'm Sherry, and if you don't know me, I'm a holistic health coach. I work exclusively with uh, midlife women because I genuinely believe that we really do deserve to age, not just gracefully, but powerfully. So my question for you today is, do you have a wine belly? Now, I know everyone's heard of the infamous beer belly, and I know when I think of a beer belly, I always think of like some sort of hairy dude. Um, but you know, what really causes the beer belly is the alcohol. So, unfortunately, wine has, has alcohol in it too, right? So. Um, for all the loveliness and romance and deliciousness that wine has, it sort of has sort of its like darker side too, where, um, you know, maybe not so good for us. So what is it with consuming wine and that leading to wine belly? Uh, the first thing is obviously the calories, right? Um, so the typical glass of wine is about five ounces, and that's going to average about 125 calories a glass. So this doesn't matter if it's red wine, if it's white wine, it's kind of always gonna be in that range of like 120 to 130 calories. Now, the other thing that contributes to the wine belly is the idea that as alcohol, it's really sort of nutritionally empty, right? They're just, there's not any nutritional value from consuming alcohol. And so because of that, the body handles it in a much, much different way than when you eat food. So as you're consuming alcohol, um, it just gets absorbed right into the bloodstream. And the body then kind of takes a look at it and says, okay, we are gonna go ahead and metabolize this right away. And so then any of the other like sort of food nutrients that might be in the bloodstream are gonna kind of get stored as fat because the body is never ever gonna look at alcohol and peg it as something that nutritionally it can store later as energy. So because of this, it kind of like aids in increasing our, our belly fat. And so that's kind of why it starts to creep on really more in the belly. And if you watched last week's video, I talked about three of the really big dangers that we face when our bellies get a little bit too big for our britches. Um, the other thing is, as we age, unfortunately, um, I know we've all seen our like metabolism go down just in general, but we also, our ability to metabolize alcohol also declines. So that's never a good thing. <laughs> now, um, lastly, I know I am, this has happened to me too many times for me to even care to reminisce about. But when you drink, 
you tend to eat more. Your, your guard's a little bit more down. You're not necessarily making the best choices, um, the wisest choices. Sometimes you're just eating for the sake of eating. You're not even hungry. And that also obviously adds on those additional calories. Plus, you know what? If it's midnight and you've had a couple of glasses of wine, chances are you're not grabbing a salad. You're grabbing something like, you know, chips or a cheeseburger or something that's not going to be um, really nutritionally beneficial, but really dense in calories. Uh, but then additionally, the next morning when you wake up, if you have a hangover, right, what do you want to do? You want to have like sort of those, that greasy, comfort heavy food so you feel like you have something sitting on your stomach so now it's almost like you've got like like a, a double whammy of eating late night which is never good and especially since we're eating food that's not good and then the next day not feeling good and eating more food to try to help us feel better so all of this goes ahead and contributes to weight gain and mostly it ends up in our belly, unfortunately. So if you find that you are struggling with your wine belly, or perhaps just a belly caused by something else, I am running a free five-day challenge at the end of this month. And it's all about how to really take control of losing that belly fat. And it's, it's, um, going to be from January 24th through 28th. I will go ahead and put the link in the comments and we're really going to be looking at what truly causes belly fat, what you can truly do on your own to start to release that belly fat from your diet or from your body and really how you can start to feel better, get more energy and get comfortable in your skin again. So Hope you sign up. I would absolutely love to see you there. And until next week, peace and love.